What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. It's another rainy early morning in the Pacific Northwest, but that's not going to stop us from working on our 350Z. In today's episode, we're going to take this Walbro 450 pump and modify our factory um, fuel housing, fuel pump housing, to accept it. There's some trimming that we need to do, um, but I'll show you how to do it. This application is perfect for the power level for our LS swap. This application is also perfect if you're going to be single turbo, twin turbo in the uh, stock VQ in the 350Z, or if you just want to run some E85 with bigger injectors NA, um, this will help you out. So stay tuned. I picked up this spare fuel pump housing at the junkyard while grabbing the transmission because as some of you know the transmission in the car originally um, was an automatic and it got swapped to a six speed but um, I found this and it looked really clean um, so I figured I'd grab it just because I knew we'd be kind of messing with it and I figured it doesn't hurt to have a spare because we will be cutting into this so we're going to start by disassembling um, these don't have to come off but you just squeeze and pull I have a feeling this guy is going to be really difficult yeah always hate these damn plugs okay there we go take that off Next, we're going to um, pop this guy out gently, pull it off to the side. Now we're going to be pulling these connectors off. We're going to disconnect the existing fuel pump. that's it. Now we're going to take our screwdriver and pop that off. The spring will come with it. Oops. Both, both springs will come with it. Like that. Put those off to the side. We'll be reusing that. Just look. This fuel filter looks like it's never seen gasoline in its life. So, not sure what's up with that, but that's awesome for me. Next, Move that off to the side. We are going to pop this bottom off. Like that. This rubber piece will come with it. We can yield pump out and we want to make sure we pull this um, rubber fitting off because we will be reusing that and um, sometimes when you pull the fuel pump out this rubber fitting may or may not come with it um, so if it doesn't come with it it's probably still up inside the housing okay we're going to take off this uh, little sock and the best way to do that is there is a I don't know if you can see there's a little retainer clip in there it's basically just a washer with some teeth we want to pop that off Oops, and save it. This is never going to focus, but you can see it kind of. Save that. Now the sock comes off. Um, if yours is filthy, this one's very clean, but if yours is filthy, I'd recommend getting a new one for sure. 
they're cheap enough. And then you got your bare pump. We're not going to be reusing this. We'll keep it though. You never know what kind of project you need a pump for. So now we're back to our bare housing. The new pump has this clip on it or this connector on it and um, it does not fit in the factory uh, opening and it also is not the same clip as right here. So what we're going to do is, I know some kits give you a pigtail. I just bought the pump, no kit. But even if I did have the pigtail, I would end up cutting these and hardwiring these and soldering it. So we're going to cut at the clip and we're going to leave as much wire as we can. Normally cutting the clip, I'd leave enough to put the clip back on, but I know I'm not going to be reusing it. Um, same deal over here. Um, we'll just cut it relatively close to the clip. Actually, this one, yeah, we'll leave a little bit. And we're going to put our rubber back on the top and slide pump with the wires up and in, grabbing the wires and lining up that rubber into the opening and pressing. Now we're going to put our filter sock back on. is on like that and then you're gonna remember to put your little retaining washer now we can take the bottom half and our springs put our spring on one spring there one spring there slides down onto there and then this side slides down onto there and right here you'll see you push and it clips. Alright I'm back and it's been quite a while since the last clip was filmed uh, relating to the fuel pump. I went ahead and I changed out the electrical tape. That was a no-go. Um, the gasoline if it touches the tape will just eat away at the uh, adhesive and it'll just come off. So I went through and soldered with the heat shrink. So I feel much better about that. I also waited or ordered and had to wait for the CJ Motorsports. Um, it's the return line actual um, kit. And what it is is it gives you this piece right here that goes and we'll take apart this. I'll need a screwdriver. But it, it goes in there and replaces that fitting or that valve allowing for the Venturi system to um, work. The kit also came with another bulkhead fitting. So a little different but I think it'll be fine. So let me grab a couple tools and I'll be right back. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to take off this plastic, it's like a retainer almost. <clears throat> there you go. It's tough, but works. Snaps right back on like that. Now, thread on this fitting. Now take the hose provided, thread it on there. And then attach it to the barb at the bottom. 
now with this setup, we should be good to go with our return system. All right, what we're gonna do now is remove the existing fuel pump, and it's just gonna be taking these Phillips screws out, removing this ring. I can take this ring. difficult one-handed and then this pump comes out and see this hose right here we need to make sure we pop that off and make sure we put it on back on the other pump when we put the other pump in all right got it off sorry the light is bright but it's what I got to work with make sure when you pull it up the arm which is normally laying horizontal you know parallel to the ground um, you don't snag that and break that as you pull it out but got it out still dripping I'll get the new one in all right I got the new fuel pump in and I have my return line and my feed in so this is the feed obviously and I still need to trim down and put a fitting on my return line, but I'm going to put this on now so I don't get them mixed up. Here's a quick little progress update. I got my return line run right here to my Aeromotive um, fuel regulator. The gauge is just a dummy gauge really. We'll be pulling a digital fuel pressure off of our rail. Um, and the system that we're going to go with now is a dual feed return. So um, this is the return from fuel rail, return from fuel rail to then the return to the tank. And that's going to come in off of one line here that runs something like this. And the second line I still have to make up and it will run to here. And then I just need a fitting for here and we're pretty well set. All we'll have to do to finish the fuel is throw our injectors in, get the fuel rails seated. So I'll be back after I get some fittings on and some lines made. So be right back. Quick little update. I got my um, three lines plumbed into the fuel regulator. So the two come from either fuel rail and then the bottom one goes back to the tank and is the bypass. So next I will get my injectors in and get these fuel rails mounted. And um, then I'll need to set up the fuel, figure out where I want the um, fuel filter to go and where I'm gonna mount that. And then um, put in a Y and the two fuel lines that are the feeds to the fuel rails. And then the fuel system will be done. So let me get set up. And I'll be right back. So as you can see, I got my injectors back in. And they're just the stock injectors from the engine that came out of the uh, truck. Um, supposedly, because this is out of a flex fuel truck, the injectors are a little bit bigger. Just to allow for the um, E85 so I don't know if that's true, I didn't fact check it, but it sounds good and I'm going to go with it. So I'm going to get my fuel rails mounted up and I'll be right back. Here's the final product of the fuel rail being installed. You can see how the fuel rail brackets mount to the bottom of the intake manifold. So I think it looks pretty good. Now I'll move on to the driver's side. So I've been trying to figure out where I'm going to mount this fuel filter and right now this seems like the only logical place. Seems pretty sturdy. feed so we are going to put a Y in and I've already kind of mocked this up with the fuel rail in place 
place this back on. All right, I got my first piece made. So I'll work on snaking that down in here. Seems fairly clean. So now I just need one little piece that's about eight inches long. All right, so I got my last little piece, and like I said, it's a real short one. And I'm not 100% thrilled about it at this point. I think I will probably end up um, changing this. Um, I think it needs to have two 45 fittings, just based off of where the filter is and where this is routing to. But for now, it'll get the job done. It'll get the job, the car started, and we'll let us play with it a little bit. So there's my dual feed. So you can see there's the fuel pump into our Y, into one side, and then into the other, and to the front of the fuel rails. This fitting right here, I haven't talked about yet. It's going to be where my digital fuel pressure sensor goes for the Holly Terminator X ECU. Then on the other side is just a standard return line. And those return to our fuel regulator. We have an Aeromotive Compact fuel regulator, good to 100 PSI. And then out the bottom of the regulator, back to the tank. All right, that's a wrap on another video. Uh, we may have gotten a little ambitious in this one and hence it's a week behind, but you know, I'm really happy with getting the fuel rails on, getting the uh, fuel pump modified. Uh, that was a big job in itself. Getting the fuel run lines run from the tank, the feed and the return, and then getting all of the miscellaneous uh, fuel lines installed. So I think as far as it goes, the fuel system's ready to go, and in the next episode, we'll be dealing with the electronics. So that's getting our Holly Terminator X set up, getting our grounds set up, getting, uh, you know, everything wired up. Um, I don't think I'm going to worry about gauges in the next episode. I just want to get it wired and um, ready to crank. And, you know, after we do that, we're really close to see an actual turnover and start up so stay tuned for that if you like the video as always leave it a big thumbs up and if you like the build hit that subscribe button so you can follow along you know if there's any uh, comments or questions leave them down in the comment section below I love getting feedback and positive or negative let it rip so that'll do it for this video I'll see you in the next one Thank <laughs> you.